almost 70% of all poultry farmers don't know how to carry out the brooding process in the correct way. Therefore, on this video, I'm going to share with you the magic formula that is going to ensure that you have no death of chicks, that is a 100% survival rate during the brooding process. Also, this magic formula is going to ensure that you have a very fast growth for your chicks and also is going to produce chances of disease infection or disease attack in your chicken coop. To ensure that you have a 100% survival rate, there are certain things or parameters that the farmer needs to follow. And I'm going to break those things down in the simplest way possible so that I can help you ensure that you get 100% survival rate for your chicks. But before you get into more details in this video, kindly do me a favor and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and then like this video. Please like so that the YouTube algorithm can share this video to more people because we surely take a lot of time, research and money for us to compose this kind of videos for you guys. So I will request you to like this video and you can share to other farmers so that they can come and learn from what I'm going to teach you today. So let me break down for you all the things that you require for you to have a very good survival rate for your chickens and these things are five of them and i'm going to go through them in a very good order that's what is expected of you therefore the first thing is chick selection so what do i mean by chick selection is that when you are going to select the chicks ensure that you select from a very good breed and the breed will depend on the kind of production that you want either you want for broilers you're going to chick broilers or layers or the indigenous chicken and this breed if you're going to get this breed or this chick from a, from another farmer ensure that the chick is an f1 chick first generation chick because you don't want to bring a chick that is that is that has a good and a good very bad breeding practices therefore ensure that it is an f1 breed Another thing is that ensure that the chick is well vaccinated. And on the first day, you usually expect the chicks to be vaccinated against Malex. And this vaccination schedule might differ according to the area that you come from because of different exposures of this kind of diseases. So you have to vaccinate your chicks. And this is usually done at the hatchery. So the other thing is that when you bring the chick at your farm, the first thing is to check for any abnormalities on the chick. This can be cases of a pasted vent or also cases of lameness. So you have to distinguish which chick is want or will require more attention so that you can show that all the chicks survive. So we have gone through the chick selection. Now the second thing now, now when the chicks arrive at your farm is that you need to have a heat source. And this heat source should be ready or should be on six hours before the chicks alive and we have different kind of heat source that you can use you can either use a gas broader a charcoal burner and ultra red bulb and other kind of heat sources but for me i usually advise farmers to get a gas broader you know why because this gas broader one gas broader usually cost around 200 US dollars and this gas board is going to produce enough heat for your chicks and the best thing about this gas board is that you can regulate the amount of heat that you want and you know if you're going to use a charcoal burner you're not going to regulate that amount of heat very very well but for gas board you can regulate because it has a knob where you can do that the other thing is that this gas board usually serves 1500 birds so you can see that how it can manage all the birds for you and it is so economical because this gas brooder when you're not using it you can let it out to other farmers to use it and for where i'm coming from this gas brooder usually cost around two dollars to rent out to other farmers so you can see how this gas brooder is not going is not only going to serve you but also serve your community by renting it out to other farmers so that's the about heat source. But if you cannot afford it, you can get the charcoal burner, the ultra red bulb and other kind of heat sources. So the that thing that you're going to get into is water. And what I mean by water 
especially on the first day when the chicks are live at your farm, there are several things that this water should contain. This water should contain glucose and paraffin. And in most cases, this glucose does not come in form of glucose. It comes in the form of a chick starter. And this chick starter usually contain now the glucose, but the glucose is more than almost 70%. Also, this it also contains multivitamins, which are going to reduce the stress level of your chicks because of the transportation. So, and also in some cases, the chick starter may contain probiotic, which I would advise you if you are going to buy this chick starter from an agrovet or a vet shop, ensure that you can request them if they have a chick starter which contain probiotic, so you can get that probiotic, the glucose, and the multivitamin in one pack so that you can come and give your chicks and be sure that they are going to grow the other thing is that you have to give them liquid paraffin and this liquid paraffin is going to make the digestive tract of your chickens or chicks to be more lubricated because the chicks don't have any kind of mucus on the first few days especially in the first day so this paraffin is going to make the system much more lubricant and now the feeds will move in a very good manner throughout the system so and yeah so that's all about water and ensure that there's always water in the in the brooder and this water should be changed each and every day and the drinker should always be cleaned each and every day in the morning so that's all about water now the fourth thing which is very very interesting here is feeds so what we are saying about feed is that when the chick come at your farm you're not going to give them feeds first. You're going to give them water for like a few hours. And then after that, you're going to put feeds. And these feeds should not be put in feeders. But you can pour them all over the magazines. Because on the wood shaving, or on the type of litter that you're going to use, you're going to pour the wood shaving on top. Yeah, you're going to pour wood shaving on top of it. And on the wood shaving, you're going to have magazines. Now these magazines, then that's where you're going to pour the feeds. And you can also have you know feed feeding pans which are usually red in color and i'm going to make a video to tell you guys why most feeders and drinkers are usually red or yellow in color and what you can do to enhance or attract the chicks to come and eat so these feeds should be poured so that the chick can learn to eat because they don't know how to eat from feeders so that's recommended to pour the feeds all over so and these feeds for me, I would advise you to buy the cramp feeds if you're doing for broiler chicken. And if you have rares, you can also try to bring cramp or mash. So that is especially for the first two weeks during brooding. Cramp is the best for me. So the other thing is now biosecurity. Now this is what is going to ensure that it's going to give a boost to all the things that you have discussed above that is the chick selection heat source water and feeds biosecurity if you're not going to do biosecurity all the other things will be for nothing so biosecurity we're talking about vaccination vaccinating your chicks ensure that no no one enters the chicks the chicken house just like that they have to disinfect their their feet or their gumboots using a, a foot bath and this is going to ensure that there's no any kind of entry of diseases into the chicken house. Also, you can put somewhere whereby a person or people who came to visit your farm, such as the farm workers, can wash their hands or can bathe so that they can remove any chances of transfer of these diseases. And when a veterinarian visits you, ensure that you give them all the, all the support in terms of gamble so that they cannot bring or get with the disease inside your chicken house. So we have seen all how all these factors are going to ensure that you're going to have a very, very good hatching or good survival rate for your chicks. You have discussed chick selection, heat source, water, feed, and biosecurity. And I hope that this is going to help you. And I will recommend you to watch this video right now on the screen to learn how, how you can do the brooding using an example on what you ought to do and what not ought to do as a farmer. I'm going to discuss how this farmer is doing it and what you can improve from what this farmer will be doing it. And kindly, when you go there to that channel, please subscribe to that channel. It's my new channel on 
reaction. So I'll be reacting to what farmers are doing and telling you what they need to improve and what they need to stop doing. So see you on the next one. Bye.